Good afternoon, and welcome to another Super Secret Project sketch. This is Eric Whalen from Super Secret Project X, and uh, today I'm going to work on uh, gonna work on old Goofy. Uh, honestly, out of the original Disney trilogy of characters, I always thought Goofy was the funniest. Yeah. I mean, Hello, everyone. <laughs> Do Donald Duck is is hilarious because he's a rage machine, and Mickey Mouse is you know. Mickey sometimes is really funny. Most of the time, is just a whole lot of gosh, you know. But uh, when it comes down to it, Goofy, uh, Goofy is just funny. I mean, so <clears throat> I'm gonna work on some Goofy today because I feel like it. Well, I gotta admit, the new Mickey Mouse shorts have been putting Mickey. Hilarious. He's, he's hilarious. The newer versions of Mickey are considerably funnier uh, than a lot of the older stuff. But sometimes Mickey was funny. Uh, sometimes uh, I thought Donald on on average was funnier. But Goofy, man, Goofy, that there were just moments where, especially the how-to videos that they used to create. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, well, he was the the comedic character. Yeah, no, he and he was brilliantly funny. I always. I always loved, always loved Goofy. And Mickey, for me, my my favorite modern day interpretation of him, even though it's not so modern now, was uh, the '90s. Um, yeah, not so modern him. anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was the um, the. Um, oh, why is my brain crying? Um, the runaway brain. Yeah, and that, was, that was good. Yeah, that one was. <laughs> They really pushed his his facial expressions. They made him they made him un Mickey. Or I should say not not un Mickey. Well, they they, they kind of did. Yeah, he, he wasn't the all American. Um, Gosh. Yeah. Oh boy, kind of. He 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 was that. Cheaper skiddly do. Yeah, he was that. But I mean, when they when he was introduced in the short, he was he was playing a video game for goodness sakes. Yeah. <laughs> and. and well, he, America had game. changed at that yeah. point, and anyone whom hadn't realized uh, needs to step outside. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where it's not that I dislike Mickey, I actually like Mickey I quite a bit. Mickey. It's just, he is best when he is coupled up with other characters, or he's like Superman, where every once in a while when they get him right, he's really good. <laughs> you know, but... Goofy, Goofy was good because and and yes, the sloppy version of him with the funny hat, where he's hanging out with um, Donald and Mickey. Mm -hmm. Funny. I've always enjoyed the three of them going camping or whatever. Usually ended up being uh, very funny. Mm -hmm. And but the versions I always liked was the 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 versions where they would have him like. Which is almost never shown, which is really disappointing. Where he plays the everyman, mm -hmm. and they have him like go do something, and everything goes horrifically wrong. <laughs> that was my most favorite version of him, because because you knew he was sort of that gosh a seed kind of, you know, which is funny. I mean, I I always love that version too. But man, when they had him be the everyman and try to achieve like a task or something on screen, and then it all just goes horrifically wrong. That was my favorite version. Yeah, the the house shoes. And yeah, that, they were all like in a house, weren't they? Uh, no, they were different ones. There were because it was the um, uh, him being a, a stay-at-home dad, and then it was the businessman one. I thought. Let's, let's look it up because yes, it, uh, it really has been a long time since I've seen a lot of those. Yeah, cause I thought they were just different ones. Cause there was one when he, the, there was a one when he was a gymnast or trying to be a gymnast. I remember that one. Yeah, and of course the last one that we saw of him was the how to hook up your home home entertainment system. Yeah, that, that was like what two thousand and like mid two thousands or something. Mid two thousands. Yeah, yeah. though that was in the tradition of the ones. The ones I was thinking of were. Those fifties or sixties? I'm not sure when those came uh, out. They were older yes. ones. Fifties, actually, 
late 50s, early 60s. I don't know if I remember. Okay, here we go. We have Goofy, how to play baseball, uh, mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. swim, Father's Day. Uh, let's see, uh, Father's Day was 1953, so let's see, okay. Category Disney, Goofy Disney short films. Holy crap. We've missed, we haven't seen like over half of these. Well, I've seen a lot of them in my youth. That's that's why Goofy was always one of my favorites. Because now, now I'm curious as to how many of those I have. Okay, read them off because I know I've seen quite a few. I don't think Let's I've see. seen that many. All though. right. Uh, Goofy Disney short films: uh, Aquamania, The Art of Self Defense, 1941. Oh wow! Art, Art of Skiing. Okay, Bill. that sounds fun. That was a funny one. Art of Skiing. Yeah, Art of Skiing was really really funny. Bill posters. Boat Builders, Crazy with the Heart, Donald's Halloween Scare, Double Dribble, Father's Lion, The the Fox Hunt, Frank Duck's Bring Him Back Alive, Goofy and Wilbur, Goofy Gymnastics, that's the one I remember. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Yeah, A Hockey Homicide, <laughs> Hold That Pose, How to Fish, How to Hook Up Your Home Theater, How to Play Baseball, How to Play Football, How to Play Golf, A Night for a Day, Lion Down, L-I-O-N. Mickey's Parrot, Motor Mania, No Sale, No Smoking, The Olympic Champ, Polar, Polar Trappers, How to Swim, Two Weeks Vacation, and Template Donald Goofy. <laughs> Which uh, I think was just a very weird, uh, weird thing. Template. Okay, that was just a Donald and Goofy film. Okay, I think somebody just mis misnamed the hyperlink. <laughs> Yeah, so there, there's quite a few. I know that I've missed a few of those here. Sure, let me. I think I want to move this nose. I'm trying to think. The one where he, when he was a when he was at home, staying at home, and it was hilarious because that was showing that uh, his wife was actually cheating on him. <laughs> it was a scene where he's in of the kitchen. Of course, she is. Yeah, he's in the kitchen with this pink apron on, and. The doorbell rings, and so he goes to get the door, and the milkman pops his head in, gives him this huge kiss on the lips, and puts two bottles of milk in his hand. His eyes are closed because he's thinking it's the wife, and then walks away. He goes by, and Goofy's just standing there with these two bottles of milk with like this look of like <laughs> on his face. <laughs> that's when that's when Disney used to really, really be funny. I mean. They were they were direct competitors in the the like legitimate <laughs> funny cartoon department against Looney Tunes and you know uh, uh, Looney Tunes MGM uh, yeah those were the Fleischer main three. Uh, Fleischer yeah. would be MGM wouldn't he uh, No Fleischer was was kind of separate before then but during the yeah the sixties the the mid late early to mid the slightly late 60s, uh, Disney, MGM, and, um, and, uh, uh, Lo and, um, well, I won't say Looney Tunes, but yeah, Looney Tunes, um, Warner Brothers, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those, those three were like the main three, um, uh, before funny, the funny pictures before the movie kind of, kind of thing, and those, like, getting them into your movie house was usually pretty good. And then it's like Disney kind of, I don't want to say lost their sense of humor because they did have good stuff, but man, they used to be really, they were, they were right up there with Bugs Bunny and, you know, and it's funny, a lot of those cartoons aren't shown anymore, which is a shame because that's when they were really good. Well, I think with a lot of them, they just, they started aiming more for the all ages part, though, because they started getting, um... Yeah. That's when a lot they started doing their movies and stuff. Which is fine. I just like their other stuff too. I never understood the the mentality of now that we've got this successful thing, let's just entirely get rid of the stuff that the the rest of it. And, and I'm kind of like, well, no, keep keep doing your big, you know, summer blockbuster animated feature kind of things. But well, during that time, I think a lot of their their people went from their shorts went over to do start started working on the animated stuff or the other uh, movies and stuff so a lot of their big name talent 
got put over sure. onto there. So the sure. shorts kind of got left behind, and then that's when everyone else started coming up and kind of taking over, and then cartoons started becoming more of a TV thing also. So movie house shorts weren't... Admittedly, there yeah. was... The, there. When they started doing Saturday morning cartoons, they did it with just like whole hog, like you wouldn't believe. Or television cartoons in general, because I mean that's around that it was a. Uh, I know Flintstones were going going before then, before the big television boom. But um, I know Flintstones was like what one of the first major uh, animated uh, cartoon shows that was prime time at the time. It was at least the most successful. Um, I remember Johnny Quest was supposed to be prime time. Flintstones. Yeah, cause, I mean Flintstones. They were. They, they were. were they were the Simpsons of the time. Yeah, they were. Yeah. I mean, they, they were fifties and stuff, and I mean they were showing like in-house cigarette commercials and stuff on. Yeah. <laughs> on Flintstones. I've got some of those on DVD where you're going like Barney, stop smoking. Mm-hmm. You don't look cool. <laughs> Primarily because when people smoke, they don't look cool. But Barney, in particular, didn't didn't look. Well, that's why he did it because he thought he did look cool. <laughs> oh, Barney! You poor sap. <laughs> Napoleon complex was really hitting him really hard. <laughs> oh, but yeah, man, goofy. There, there's, there's a, there's a character that just always, when he's done right, just always slays me. And look, um, here's a place that actually has all of the various listings of um, of his movies, of his shorts, at least. Let's see, default list order. <laughs> There's a few that wasn't even named on Wikipedia. Nightmare Day, African Diary. Goofy narrates his own quest to Africa, accompanied by various tour guides. His search, he's in search of wild game. <laughs> and of course, the stereotypes abound. <laughs> yeah. There are the, the there's the um, Goofy esque uh, uh, creature person, but he's completely. Um, African characterized, caricaturized. So, yeah, he's wearing like the the uh, stereotypical was that the the top hat that they gave him to make him look like they had some they encountered culture. Uh, yeah, culture. So they thought they were big shots or something. And let's see, Romania baggage busters, California or bust, <laughs> Cold War. If he actually has a cold. <laughs> oh yeah. well, no, not that that's bad, but you got me for a second. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's why I said that. A I was Cold, like, Cold War goofy cartoon. Ooh, is he a spy? <laughs> you know. <laughs> 1951. Goofy gets sent home from work to tend to his cold. Another example of a social issue education cartoon. It's it's George Geef, aka Goofy. <laughs> Show Goofy, Father's Day off. Mrs. Goofy leaves for the day, leaving the house in the hand of her. Okay, Father's Day off is the one with the milk, the milkman dad. Awesome. <laughs> Mrs. Goofy leaves the house for the day, uh, well, leaves for the day, leaving the house in the hands of her husband Goofy. Goofy is confident that he can handle the day's household chores. See, <laughs> Father's Lion, 1952, Gigi Geef. <laughs> A geef is, is, is sort of a name. It takes his son on a camping excursion and encourages the encounters a mountain lion. I don't forget this one. Yeah, his, a lot of times when they showed his son, he was always he always had a pink nose and, and red hair or red uh, scalp as opposed to Goofy's black coloring. What did what did the milkman have? <laughs> uh, I think he was he was Goofy esque also. Well, he looked, okay. But yeah. I'm thinking he's taking after his mother. <laughs> Let's see, Father's Weekend. Fathers are people. Uh, for whom what? the <laughs> for whom the bulls toil. Foul hunting. Freeway phobia. That one I remember seeing. 
It's that does sound familiar. Yeah, <laughs> they counted, counted a different types of drivers. There's the overly timid driver, the overly aggressive driver, and finally the inattentive driver. And then its sequel in that same year, Goofy's Free Raid Trouble, where educational shorts are not true theatrical short film releases. Goofy was retired from film shorts until his 2007 reappearance, and that was the one that was the home theater one that we saw. Uh, another one, Get Rich Quick, Goofy and Wilbur, Goofy Gymnastics, Goofy Glider, Hello Aloha. I remember that one. Talking Homicide, Hold That Pose, Homemade Home. <laughs> homemade Home, 1951. Goofy building a house and struggling with the blueprints, the window glass, the paint, and finally the house housewarming guest. <laughs> uh, how to be a detective. <laughs> how to be a sailor. <laughs> Donald was not given that role. <laughs> just the fact that he's dressed as a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Heck, I need to do that one for uh, for Goofy. What was it Thor Goofy, God of Blunder? <laughs> I wanted to do. Mm. <laughs> Tomorrow, <laughs> there's one called Tomorrow We Diet. <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. Wow. No smoking one, 1951. Uh, Goofy is a, is a nicotine addict to the extreme. Finally, he decides to quit. <laughs> that That is freaking wonderful. <laughs> Gun Goofy. 1952. Bandit Pistol Pete enters a lawless western town and robs a bank. The town is in desperate need of a sheriff. Enter wandering cowboy Goofy. <laughs> Teaches our people. How to be a detective. How to stay off. How to dance. That one sounds familiar too. That does. Yeah. The, the, the cowboy one didn't, but that one does. Yeah. 1953, after a short sketch of the universal importance of dance in human cultural history, Goofy demonstrates the misery of those who don't, who don't master dancing. <laughs> this one simply called How to Sleep. <laughs> Goofy's attempts to sleep despite insomnia. Mm. It was funny, when I was a little kid, I would always watch the cartoons on that insomnia thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a hard time sleeping like some people do, but when I do, mm -hmm. I'm just like, I just got those shots of those cartoons in my head of the people with like the 14 bags under their eyes and like the blood red, sh uh, bloodshot eyes. And that are wide open and just staring into the Into, into nothing. nothing, yeah. That is That, that is, is a so hard, true. yeah. <laughs> It's one thing if we lived, like, lives that were free of schedules, and you'd be like, eh, whatever, I'm going to go do whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it sucks, but I'm up. But when you have to sleep because you got work or something the next day, <laughs> that's when it really sucks. It's like I've had times where, like, we're on vacation or whatever, no schedule, can't sleep. I'm like, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks. But, but then when you got to go to work the next day, you're like, shoot, come on. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. I've... I got nine hours at work tomorrow. I can't be the living dead. Yeah, you just you just keep looking over at the clock, and it's just getting closer and closer. It's like, yep. Okay, uh, that's why. That's why I don't even look at the clock. Okay. Three twenty-six. All right. Four nineteen. All right. Five thirty-one. Oh crap! I gotta get up in two hours. <laughs> uh -oh. Let's see. You know, it's funny, when I was younger, I was, um, mm -hmm. so was kind of jaded against some of the older stuff for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was, I was so bullied and stuff that I just didn't see anybody actually really legitimately being like these nice kind of, anyways, problems, problems. Um, 
And so I would make fun of the gosh and that kind of stuff. And now that I'm kind of looking at it, like I've got, I've got like uh, some friends now, like specifically one. The guy is the nicest guy like ever. He's just sweet and nice and he's just a really nice dude. And now the older I'm getting, the more I'm going like, it's as it is, is silly as the golly and all that stuff kind of is, I'm kind of going like, the world would be better if it was like that. You know, none of the cynical BS, just, you know, admittedly the, oh, pooper do, you know, kind of that, you know, it's not even like real swear words or anything, but it's just like, so many people, just so much negativity in them, and the ones that are just like, like legitimately kind of uh, opie like you know you're just like man I it'd be better if if people really were like you know like you know like Nick at Night TV Land kind of <laughs> stuff you know and I, I you know as long as it was really truly you know what what they really meant and it wasn't just another sort of people hiding themselves being nasty kind of a thing. And, <laughs> but yeah, just <laughs> I just love the fact, and I'd never figured it out. Goofy has an enormous knot on the back of his head, and I don't know why. It, you know, they've never explained it. Is it maybe a dog skull thing? Like, maybe on average dog skulls have, like, a knot on the back of their... Because I don't ever think of that bump being there on dogs. And then it's... But he's just got this big freaky knot on the back of his head. I always just thought it was just a... Just, like, another thing of just, just showing that he, he was a goofy-looking character. He had a misshapen head, in a sense, because... Oh sure. He's kind of a kind of a goofy looking character. Oh, that 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 would completely make sense. It's just one of those things where you just kind of want to go like, is it solid? Is there bone in there? <laughs> you know, is it is it like a, like a like a Jello filled like gooey like does it jiggle when he walks? You know. Well, you know, let's let's see if the internet can answer that. Shows extreme gerrymandering. <laughs> I have no idea why that even came in. What? <laughs> That's a lot of messed up that just came out of your mouth. I don't know why. It's a New York Times article. I'm not even going to bother with it because it's like kind of stupid. Okay. Goofy's head shape. What is gerrymandering? I'm kind of curious about the connection, but I don't think I want to explore that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just the scope of Goofy's head. That's why he wears the hat. He covers up because he's embarrassed by it. You know, it would really kill me as if, like, you, you got, like, a cartoon, like, where he, like, all the original ones, he doesn't have it. And there's, like, one cartoon where something wallops him on the back of the head, and it grows, you know, the classic cartoon bump. Mm -hmm. And then he has it for the rest of all cartoons. That would, I'd be like, right on. <laughs> Looking at the Wikipedia article and see if they have anything as far as his description. All right, he's originally known as Dippy Dog. Uh, I'm glad they changed that. It was commonly known as Goofy, a name used in his short film series. In the 50s, he played a character called George Geef or Gigi Geef. <laughs> Sources from the Goof Troop continually give the character's full name as Gigi Goofy Goof. <laughs> and then, let's see. The so show. that's part of the Goof Troop um, continuity. Really? Uh, the Goof Troop continuity was kind of part of that, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's okay. see. In other 2000s era comics, 
the character's full name has occasionally been given as Rufus D. Dog. I always liked that one. I always liked that one. The other one's okay, but I like that one. Because I like the name Goofus. You did portray as single and childless, though unlike Mickey and Donald, he didn't have a steady girlfriend. Second was the method of searching his In the Goof Troop series, Goofy was portrayed as a single father with a son in the match. Later to find out it was actually the milkman. <laughs> Let's see. Goofy's first appearance was in Mickey's Review in May, on May 25th, 1932. He had an unspeaking role. He was kind of anonymous, but uh, he, was, he was in there for 1932. Wow. Let's see. Let's see. Years with Mickey and Donald, solo series, how to series. Yeah, the how to series apparently started in the nineteen forty something. World War Two goofy. Oh wow. I bet you these are probably worth a pretty pretty penny if they ever actually if they ever survive. Apparently there were two goofy patches for, for World War II. Ooh. The uh, 602nd Bombardment, Bombardment Squadron and the 756th Bombardment Squadron. This is the first one. <laughs> and then come on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna work with him. I'm sure he's himself. Nice. The red nose was his George Geef persona. So that's where the red nose from the little kid comes. And I remember seeing him with the red nose in some of the shorts, and I didn't really care because I'm just like, well, that's not goofy. Who yes, it is. Red nose? Well, it's like we were we, we picked up Boomerang last night, and uh, it was the everyone knows Coyote and Roadrunner, but the clone of that, and I still think that they were brilliant, uh, was um, the 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 Wolf and Sheepdog cartoons. Sam the Sheep and um, Ralph. Sam and the Sheepdog. Ralph, it was Ralph and Sam. Ralph, Ralph Wolf. Yeah, Ralph and Sam the Sheepdog. Yes. Sam the Sheepdog. And I love Coyote and Roadrunner, but I the, the shtick in that one is so funny because it's like they're two Joes going to work in the morning and clocking in, and that is always there, and they always go home after they clock out, like, you know, them massacring each other during the, the day wasn't weird at all, and just so funny. I mean, Coyote and Roadrunner, funny. But there was something about that that it just kind of feels like, it, like even a little funnier. And I love Wiley e. Coyote because I thought he was better than Ralph Wolf, even though they're almost exactly the same character. <laughs> um, but it's the fact that you had two talking characters in the same cartoon, and you've got Wiley e. Coyote, and you you've got Roadrunner, which doesn't talk, and Wiley e. Coyote doesn't talk most of the time. He does in some of them. Very very few, and I. I didn't care for Wild the Wild E. Coyote. Super, Super genius. genius. I mean, when he did talk, he was funny. Yeah, I... There was one that he did when he talked that I didn't care too much for, but then there was one... Because I, I didn't like the fact that he was... He was being this know-it-all, but he kept getting beat up, so I was fine with that. Because well, I don't care But that was the joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was the joke, <laughs> obviously. The thing that I liked about the wolf was, is the wolf was clever, but he wasn't like science brainy like Wiley e. Coyote was. Mm -hmm. And the challenge was completely different because it wasn't the gag of never being able to get the road runner. It was the gag of never being able to get the sheep because this, this like almost like 
Friday the 13th Jason like uh, a sheep dog never lets him touch them like he's always just out of nowhere and it's so it's just marvelous it's just so good <laughs> modern day Mickey shorts that are out now is Mickey, Pluto, and Goofy, and Mickey is like talking to Pluto and giving him a treat. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. You're a good boy, Pluto. And then they just, they just pan over and there's just creepy shot of Goofy just staring at Mickey. Oh, I'm a good boy, Mick. <laughs> and Mickey looks at him, gives him a treat, and scratches him on the head. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are really fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad we're starting to kind of get back into into Disney having like that sense of humor again. Because man, I miss that. Because I really do love those characters. It's just Disney. I felt kind of took themselves too seriously for way too long. Well, that's the thing. Once they moved over into the whole theater aspect of it, they just started doing the whole. Yeah. We gotta be family and and heartwarming and because Disney's a family heartwarming mm. brand. Blah 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 blah. blah. That, money money. That money. that <laughs> brand is okay. It's nothing wrong with it, but and I'm not saying like man Disney they should be totally doing like all this wild violent non family stuff. I'm not saying that, mm. but a lot of initial original Disney stuff wasn't like that. You know, but it was still family entertainment. It's closer to like what the Japanese consider family entertainment. You know, the actual whole family can watch it instead of just the three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. You know, and well, like I said, to be fair, then they went on and they started doing their doing the other stuff. That's where Warner and MGM stepped up, and they were, in my opinion, they were doing it a lot better. So, yeah, and, and, and they were. I mean, you had fun slapstick stuff and. I mean, a lot of the comedy genres started coming out really hardcore during that time, so... And, and plus you had some really great cartoon actors who were coming through, and a lot of the... A lot of the Disney voice actors weren't really comedic people. They were... They were character actors. They weren't comedic people. And with the, a lot of the, um, the Warner Brothers and, and MGM folks, those people were not only... Uh, like really great character actors, but they were also comedic character actors. Sure, sure. I mean, Mel Blank coming through there. Oh my gosh, he was he was he was a freaking genius. And then we started getting people like um, uh, June Foray coming through and um, oh, I didn't some of the other names of some of the old school like comedy voice actors who could just really toss it in there. But uh. But yeah, we have some really great folks in the Which also, by the way, rest in peace, Rusty Taylor, was of Minnie Mouse. Mm. And she passed away last week, and which was sad timing because the last Mickey Mouse short that came out the week before she died was featuring Minnie Mouse singing a, a serenading, uh, yeah, serenading, there we go. <laughs> serenading, she was cutting them up. Um, she was serenading Mickey Mouse. And it was a really fun. She was like, serenading. <laughs> And she was, it was a really cute, but really super funny just, uh, comedy routine of, of her singing to Mickey while she, while they're floating down the river in a boat. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was kind of sad, but on the same note also really, I don't want to say it was sweet, but you know, she and like the voice, the original voice of Mickey, like she and that guy, which oh crap, I'm blanking on his name also. Uh, they were actually married in real life. Mm -hmm. So Mickey and Minnie were actually real life husband and wife. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that was so sweet. And he died in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, so. Yeah, but oh, we're finally together. I bet you God's just like, hey, do the voices. <laughs> 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 No! Stop asking! <laughs> oh, boy! <laughs> Saint Peter You're Paul. more demanding than Walt! <laughs> <laughs> As 
Well, they well just popped up in the corner. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> pretty funny. That'd be good, huh? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yo. Oh, yo. <laughs> yourself a good week and I will catch you later. Yeah. Actually wait wait. Oh I gotta I gotta do the thing. Gotta do the thing. <laughs> boom. <laughs> and the boom. Yeah, let's say you forgot to build your away. It's warm. <laughs> it's warm. It's warm enough that it's it's dumbing me down a little bit warm enough that it's totally uncomfortable. All right, now everyone have yourself a good week. We will catch you later.